Hello, this is Adam from MindForge Technologies. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use Wubi Installer to install an Ubuntu operating system alongside your Windows operating system. Uh, one of the biggest barriers people have to trying out Linux operating systems is that they sound scary and difficult um, and also that they're hard to install. Uh, Wubi takes care of that very nicely because it's using Ubuntu and Ubuntu is really really easy to use and very intuitive and it's kind of a almost like a hybrid between a Mac and a Windows interface and it lets you install in such a way that it's basically like installing another program so it's very simple to install and then the operating sy system itself is very easy to use uh, you'll first want to launch a browser this is using Launchy like we showed you previously and then you will want to go to this website, this wubi-installer.org. And this is where you can download this little application called Wubi, which will do the work of installing Ubuntu for you. So you'll click Download Now and save the file. Uh, mine automatically goes to the desktop. You can see it's a small file, so it went very quickly. And this is just for reference. This is the Ubuntu website. Uh, so you can go here and kind of browse around to get an idea of what Ubuntu is and get some more information about it. I'll actually be showing you how to install Xubuntu, but the process is exactly the same. The operating system is just slightly different. So you can see, though, that they have Ubuntu for your different needs. So if you have a netbook, you can run Ubuntu on it. Um, it's very fast and has tons and tons of free software. Uh, you can also run a server using Ubuntu. So since Ubuntu is a Linux distribution, it is... Uh, completely open source and completely free and a lot of people are skeptical that a free operating system can be any good but it's actually a fantastic operating system and can do really anything that Mac or Windows can do except it can't run video games but then neither can a Mac uh, but anyway back to Wubi you'll just want to launch Wubi and now normally when you do this you're not going to see this dialog first. Wubi lets you install it in some in several different ways. So if you already have an installation disk, uh, so if you have a, a disk that you burned for Xubuntu or Ubuntu or something similar, then it will automatically find it and then run something like this. And this is the first thing that you would see, which is what I'm doing right now with an Xubuntu installation disk. Now as I showed you previously with disk images, you can download Xubuntu or Ubuntu off of the internet and as an ISO, as a disk image, and then burn it to an actual disk and then use it um, like this. Or you can download that disk image and then use virtual clone drive or something similar to trick your operating system into thinking that there's a real disk, in which case you'll also get this same dialog. But if you do choose that option, you'd want to go to install inside Windows. This is what you will see next. Now, if you're installing, if you had just downloaded Wubi and you did not have a disk or anything else with an Ubuntu installation on it, then this is the first thing that you would see. So it's going to ask you where you want to install, and so we'll just tell it Drive C, and you can it'll tell you how much free space you have. I have very little, so I'm going to make my installation size a little bit smaller. Now this is just going to tell you how much space on the hard drive is going to be allotted to your Ubuntu installation. Now a desktop environment is basically asking which version of Ubuntu you want. Since I'm installing it from the Xubuntu disk, Xubuntu is my only option. But if you were, had downloaded Wubi and then just ran it by itself without having a disk, then you would get several options here. You would have Ubuntu, Xubuntu, Kubuntu, and Mythbuntu. So I would just look up all of those different versions and see what is best for you. Then you'll choose your language and your username and a password. Now you have to have a password for Linux operating systems and that'll become clear later on, um, but you absolutely have to. So you can't leave this blank. Uh, it can be something simple if you want it to be. Just make sure that it is something that you can remember. And once you're done with this part, you would just hit install. At this point, it's now going to be taking files from my disk and putting them on my hard drive. If you did not use a disk, then it'll be downloading all of the files from the internet. So this will take a little bit of time. If you're doing a download, it'll take uh, half an hour or longer, depending on how fast your internet connection is. So you can go off, have some coffee, come back, and it'll be done. Since this will take a few minutes, I'll just skip ahead to when it's done.
this is the last thing that you'll see, and this will be true whichever method you use. Uh, again, since I'm doing Xubuntu, you're going to see the Xubuntu logo, which is this guy with the little mouse in here. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot, and we'll see how it looks. The next thing that you'll see is going to be this uh, option of choosing which operating system you want. You're going to see this every single time you reboot your machine. By default, it's going to go with Microsoft XP or whatever your um, version of Windows is. And it will wait about 30 seconds before it just chooses it by default. So if you don't do anything at this point, then it'll just go ahead and do this after 30 seconds. You can make that time smaller or larger, uh, which I'll show you how to do later. Uh, so you just use the arrow keys up and down to switch between the two, and then just hit enter when you want to choose one. So we, of course, want to launch Xubuntu, so I will hit enter on that. And then we will continue to boot. And now you can see the standard Xubuntu loading screen, uh, which is what you'll always see before Xubuntu starts. The Ubuntu one looks similar, um, just again the color scheme is different. Now your uh, first boot into Ubuntu X Ubuntu will likely be a lot slower than this. I cut out chunks of time to make it go faster for this video. So as you can see, we had to restart again at the end of the installation. And so you'll get, get this screen again and um, go back to Xubuntu with a down arrow and hit enter. And now finally we have made it to the very pretty Xubuntu login screen. Now again the Ubuntu login screen is going to look a little bit different but basically have all the same kind of stuff. So you can shut it down from up here, restart it, change language, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so again, that installation time will probably take 45 minutes, maybe half an hour, something like that. I've cut out the vast majority of it to make this go faster. Type in your username here, hit enter, and then type in your password, and enter again. And now here's your Xubuntu desktop. So if you're running Ubuntu, you're going to see a pretty familiar thing. Um, it's going to have two toolbars, one up here and one down here. And sort of like the Windows Start menu, you have the same kind of thing up here. They have applications and then places, uh, which kind of takes place of the Windows Start menu. Now finished our installation of Ubuntu without having to do anything difficult besides wait around. So you can see it already found updates for us, and you want to update it right away probably. Uh, Ubuntu updates very frequently, and so you can just click this little icon to pull up the up update menu. And you can see they're all automatically checked, and you can scroll on the list and see what they are if you're interested. Most of them will be fairly cryptic. When you click install updates, it'll probably ask you for your password. Now anytime you do anything, um, like install new software, or edit anything within the operating system and that kind of thing, it will ask you for your password. So that's why it's important to make sure you choose something you can remember. Uh, and you can do this um, once you finish your installation, and I would recommend it, especially to make sure that all of your drivers for your hardware is actually recognized by the operating system. Uh, this is uh, Adam from MindForge Technologies, and this is the tutorial on how to install Ubuntu or Xubuntu with Wubi. Thanks for watching.